I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is the Mulligan's Two Podcast. Let me just set the scene for you. I can't assume that everybody knows where Euclid and Tofino are. Canada is over 5,000 kilometers wide. Huge. The western edge of Canada is not Vancouver. It is, in fact, Vancouver Island. And the edge of Vancouver Island is extreme because the next piece of land across the Pacific Ocean is Japan. The surfing is fantastic. The food is phenomenal. You have to want to be there. Because Canada ends right at the beach, but the beaches are spectacular. It has everything going for it, including Lisa Aye. Every once in a while, I get lucky and have a friend drop by. Lisa Aye is a good friend. She is an amazing chef. She was born in Fort Worth, Texas. That's a long story. But she ended up in Yuclulet and then realized that Tofino, just up the road, could use a restaurant, and she created Sobo, one of the most popular restaurants in a small town filled with restaurants. She parlayed that into two amazing cookbooks. The last one we worked together was called Together at Sobo. I'm going to ask her about her third book, if it exists. And what's happened to Lisa is that she has become a contestant in Top Chef Canada the oldest contestant in the history of the show, 64 years old. But they don't mention her age. And she's sort of riding on that. She's representing her segment of the community, of the population. And she'll explain that as well. So we're going to talk about her book, this competition that she's involved in at Top Chef Canada. She's five shows into an eight-show arc, and she's still on the show. So we'll see what happens. We wish her luck. As Lisa said in a recent interview, there is just so much to love about the West Coast, the communities, the natural environment, obviously the abundance of beautiful food. This community gets it. We're a community full of gardeners, fishermen, foragers. What's not to love? It's captured my heart and my soul. I really, really, really love the West Coast and everything that the members of this community have done for the last 24 years to embrace me. I feel like I've been here my entire life. We welcome Lisa Aye. Enjoy this interview. Hello, friends. T.D. Mulligan, Tasting Room Radio, and the Mulligan Stew Podcast. Lisa Aye has returned to the show, well, one of the shows. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Terry David. When last we talked, it was about uh, Together at Sobo, your book that, last book that launched. Um, have I missed a, a deadline for another book? Uh, have you had time to write another book? Well, I have not had time to write another book, although I have written the notes for another book. I've just changed my mind on the subject a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> of um, course, it's about food and uh, recipes, but it's like, what what way am I going to go? Uh, is that like a like songwriting in that you wait for the song to find you, you wait for the title, you wait for inspiration that comes out of the air kind of thing? I, I think so. I, I felt like a few years ago I had my mind made up exactly what I was going to do with book number three. And as it turns out, I see the need for something else. So perhaps this time I'm going to embrace my current situation, which is was just like a lot of people in the world right now. And that's cooking for one. And cooking for one is, can be challenging. And you find that you don't treat yourself as well as sometimes <laughs> yes. you should. You yes. just make things easy. Like here's a smoothie and a cheese sandwich or something. And you know, you got to treat yourself really well first so that, so that you have the energy and the fuel to, to take care of others when, when they're around. And, some of the things with, with, with a lot of cookbooks, certainly with the ones that I've written, is they're geared towards four, six, or even more. And, you know, taking that down, especially from a financial standpoint, how can you do it, stay within your budget, you know, as you're aging, like myself, and, and still treat, treat yourself with uh, enjoying the best things for now not saving them for later. So I bought scallops this week and I made them three days in a row for myself. For yourself. Just for myself. Well, okay, I like that. I mean, that, that's more that, that's not just uh, 
cooking for one. It's there's another existential sidebar to that. I mean, it's it is about treating yourself, your, how you feel about yourself, about the world around you, all those things. All those things. Food mm-hmm. is the center of it. Um, mm-hmm. You are part of the uh, Euclid special that I'm doing. Uh, we've been okay. to Pluvio. I'm going to finish the show by talking to uh, James Costello, who carries with him great fishing information, cares about the ocean around us, and also is one of the best guides in the business at uh, Maximum Coastal Adventures. And Mike Marriott from Eagle Marine, Columbia Fuel, Long Beach Charters, um, someone who uh, and and can talk about the history of Euclid and how much it's grown. Because I keep thinking, Tofino's getting all the headlines. I seem to find myself being pulled to Euclid. Why is that, do you think? What is it? Well, Euclid is where I first landed when I yeah. came when I came to uh, Canada. Yeah. I fell in love with its down-to-earth community. I mean, it's still a community from all walks of life yeah. um, doing what they do. I fell in love with the ruggedness of it and the fact that it wasn't commercialized too much. You know, I'm talking 25 years ago. Certainly it's grown, but at the core of it, I think it's stayed that same community. And I always think of Tofino and Euclid as one. I always try to convey that because we're just, you know, we're just down the road from one another and we don't need to be rivals. And yes, a lot of the press comes to Tofino, but Euclid has it has is equal to Tofino and its landscape and I adore the community of people. I'm actually heading down there tonight to Black Rock to celebrate one of my past employees uh, is on Dragon's Den tonight with her company called Mint. And Mint is a cleaning supply company. And I hope they strike it big on the Dragons. Another television series. Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that. I promise. We'll get to that. Uh, the thing about the Tofino and Euclid is... Uh, you clearly doesn't have, I said, to, I think it was Meg, doesn't have the la-di-da that Tofino has. The, the, the Tofino, fe, uh, uh, some parts of Tofino feel as though they have to have that la-di-da. That's that because that's the way they've been written up. That's um, right. It's tough to be there all the time. That can wear thin. Uh, and between the two of them, I, I can find a happiness between, I can take a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and still be on that coast and and deal with none of it as long as if I'm on the walking on the beach, it's all just beach. I agree. Uh, are you happy there still? I'm so happy. This is my. I hope this is my forever home. But I know that life always throws you, you know, curveballs. So yeah. I, you know, the entire island of Vancouver Island is completely intriguing. So. I love my home. I, I love where I'm at. But I've, I'm also flexible in knowing what, you know, life life changes. I think life has changed. Well, I got a an email today from a dear friend, somebody I've been a broadcaster with for many years. And then he took off and started a software tech company in the States and was very successful with it. And I got a note just saying, my wife and I are thinking it's time to get out of here and come home. Mm-hmm. any suggestions and I thought that's not going to be the last email that I'm going to get because uh, there's uh, the things are afoot and uh, and I think that Tofino you clue that we'll see an increase in such people down the road I believe so I believe so I mean and, if you uh, had a choice it brings like-minded people here <laughs> that appreciate yes that appreciate the ruggedness of it yeah Lisa, uh, yeah, I would hold up the book if I, if I had it. All good. Together at Sobo. Have you got it in the room? I do. I just want I have to... one in the kitchen. You know, just in case I forget yeah, how yeah. to cook. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> Somet- I know it's seriously though. Sometimes I have to look at my own recipes, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. So that was the first one. The Sobo Cookbook, yeah. 2014. And this was the latest one. Um, when did it come out? Two thousand uh, uh, Last year, summer, fall. Yeah, that's yeah. right, 2023. Yeah. Together at Sobo, which is very much about the community in which I do business and I play and live and 
do business. Well, congratulations on those books, truly. And thank, thank you, you for asking me to be just part of the rollout. Um, now, you, you are involved uh, in a television uh, at this level. And I realize going in that, uh, Lisa, you cannot talk about how it all works out. But explain how you came to be uh, a television star this year. Well... There is this little show called Top Chef, yep. and they're all over the world. And they uh, they have a show in Canada, Top Chef Canada, season eleven. They hadn't filmed for about three years. I'm a big fan of the show. I I just adore the fact that I think it's um, I think it's really challenging and much harder than it looks. And I I've always been that person sitting on the couch at home watching for the last ten seasons not the person that says, oh my God, I can do that. Oh my God, what were they thinking? I actually sit on the couch going, oh my goodness, how on earth are they going to pull that out? 20 minutes, 30 minutes to do these challenges. Oh my God, I'm glad I'm not there. That has got to be so hard. So I never fancied myself uh, to, to do the show. However, I got a call from a food writer that I've known for years and she, she encouraged me to apply. And she prodded at me a few times to apply. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm too old. First of all, these are usually young chefs in their, I'll say in their prime. And and I shouldn't say that because that's just a thought process that I don't know that we seem to grab a hold of that when you're in your 30s to 40s, you know, you're in the prime of your career. That does not have to be so. I happen to be 64 now. And at the time when I received this phone call, I was 63. They've never had anyone even close to my age go on the show. So, of course, I thought, well, I can't do this. It was my kids, Barkley and Ella, who said, oh, geez, Mom, why don't you practice what you preach? You're always telling us, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to try new challenges. You learn more from failing yeah. than from winning yeah. and life is about the journey not the destination so why would you say no and the way that the last year of my life has unfolded is I've actually stepped away from the brick and mortar restaurant of Sobo I've gone on this venture of creating my as you know my wild salmon chowder to go into grocery stores of right. which I'm right. doing now and it's awesome but it also gives me a little bit more freedom with my own time, which I didn't feel like I had before. So I couldn't find the reasons to say no. I mean, I'm good and healthy. Yep. I have a high, high energy level. So I thought I could keep up with the younger chefs physically. On the other side of the coin, I thought, well, I don't have these fancy tricks in my bags. I don't use circulators and, you know, I'm not a sous vide person necessarily. I'm not saying anything against it. It's just not in my wheelhouse. I'm more of a Griswold cast iron, open flame. I'm about nurturing home food, comfort food. I've never been about showing off on a plate. Yeah. And I, I mean that with a great amount of respect to the chefs that can pull that off. That's just not what I've done. And where my life has led me, I've cooked for a community of people, I've cooked for family, and I just didn't think that that style of cooking was going to be of interest for them. But I went ahead and filled out the application, and you could have knocked me over with a feather when a month later I get a call from the executives, the uh, one of the producers, and there was a room full of people because I could hear people laughing in the background saying, well, you're in and you're going to be traveling on these dates and we're really excited and here's what you need to do next. Then I thought, oh no, I got to put my money where my mouth is. I said I'd do it. Now I've got to actually do it. Well, yeah, let's talk about it for a second. How many dates? How many times? How many? How, how many dates were they asking you for? They were asking me for a month. Yes. A month of being away from my home, yep. away from my family, being very secretive about where I was going. Nobody could know where I was going except for my kids and my mother. Um, Non-disclosure agreements. They have to keep their self zip, zip, zipped. Yeah. I can't tell them how I did. I can't tell them anything. They just need to know where I'm at in case of emergencies. So a month of my time being sequestered in an apartment slash hotel 
in Toronto for somebody like me who needs to be in the outdoors every day for a good portion of time. I mean, if I'm not on the water, I'm in the woods when I'm not working. And I thought, oh, wow, okay, here we go. So I think the fact of just being in a, you know, in a city, in a hotel, um, yeah. really being sequestered from your family was probably the biggest challenge for me out of the entire thing. So it's November 14. How many shows have you yes. done? Uh, we have just, last Monday was um, the fifth show. Okay. And there's eight shows. And I can say that I'm still on because a lot of people have seen it by now and they know that I'm still on. So I've made it right now to the final five. And I'm surprised that they haven't talked about my age at all. I bring it up one time at the beginning interview, but they have not talked about it at all. And I'm thrilled with that because it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be that I'm there just for the demographic, the viewers to tune in and root for this old gal. In in those five uh, sessions, <clears throat> was there anything that threw you for a loop in terms of the food, uh, the prep, uh, or had you been down that road somewhere, somehow? Well, a lot of things threw me for a loop. Mostly it was equipment, not really food. I mean, the time, surely the, the clock is ticking. So you, sometimes you're 20 minutes, sometimes you're 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges, I had to do an entree for a wedding for Majun Pak. She's a well-known food critic and a food writer in, in Vancouver. An entree that says that blends the two cultures of the bride and groom, the bride being Chinese and the groom being French. Ah, uh, yeah. And I have 30 minutes to do it. That threw me for a little bit of a loop. I did pretty well with that, actually. I, I, I won the head-to-head -head challenge on that one. But 30 minutes to do an entree that, that would entice the palate of a well-known food writer and her, her groom... I was, you know, those are things that are very hard. But for me, the hardest thing, I think you know this about me, I'm not awesome with computers and technology. Actually, I'm pretty, pretty bad. Um, so there was a lot of high-tech equipment on set. KitchenAid is the sponsor. So it's really nice when you use their equipment. It's good for them. It's good for the show. And it's the equipment that's there. And I've always loved KitchenAid. But I go back to the time of, you know, the stand-up KitchenAid mixer. That's what I'm comfortable with. These these other pieces of equipment all have computers attached to them. And you've got to hit all the right buttons. So mm -mm. I no. struggle with small appliance and buttons. So I would say that was really, that so, was a hurdle for so me. So did you stay old school? I did, the times that I ventured into the small appliances, sure. it did not bode well for okay. me. Right. So I did stay pretty much old school. I went for my knife and the cutting board and, and the flame. Um, however, I was intrigued and I made it my mission to learn about all of those high tech, newfangled things. And I, I, you know, should write KitchenAid a letter when this is all done saying, if I... If I can actually learn how to use your equipment, I know that every household should be able to learn as well because I'm really challenged. All right. Up ahead is the unknown, of course. Um, and then if and when you get to that final moment, uh, you can't tell anybody. You have to walk around with the, uh, you know, you have to disappear. Uh, so Correct. Uh, and when is the announcement date down the road? I don't, I haven't really looked ahead to see when the last show is, but I'm guessing three weeks from now, there's eight episodes. So we did five. So we've got three weeks. So it's pretty exciting. The beginning of December. Has your phone been ringing? Has your emails been going crazy? Um, I've got, especially this past week, because it was about love and family and yeah. farming. Yeah. All of my favorite subjects. I love my family so deeply. And my daughter, Ella, sent a video message that they played on air. We had everybody crying. I've received more messages about that. I, 
you know, unfortunately, my son was farming in the Okanagan. He was knee deep into, you know, uh, his work at Pomplemousse Jus Winery. So he was unable to to send a video, but um, it was really heartwarming. And then we went to a farm and, you know, I adore local fresh products. So yeah, the, the, the Pomplemousse is as a, a cut above. They are simply without peer. I thank you for saying that. I just spent Thanksgiving out there and I was so impressed with everything I saw that the fact that they were really letting, you know, the grapes speak for themselves. Yep. Let the land and be the I land. And when I watched yep. my son in the tasting room and how he described how the farming is done and, yeah. and, and how we don't want to tamper. And then he then he compared it to an heirloom tomato on <laughs> why would you want to muck it up with anything, a little sea salt and beautiful extra virgin olive oil, that's perfection. And I looked at him and my heart just swelled with pride thinking that, oh my gosh, he's heard this all of his life about the purity of, of beautifully thoughtful grown yeah produce vegetables fruits and he is now actually working for a very small winery there's only four people there yeah, that's right he's learning everything and he's taking that philosophy and those morals and ethics and he's creating his own career path now from that he also realizes that he's part of a community you and them right people who think like you who grow like you who farm like you who make wine like you who cook like you yep yep very authentic. I love well, it. Welcome to the family. Okay, I, I'm going to go uh, edit the hell out of this and um, and get on with my, my life here as, as it is. Uh, I'll be watching. And if you disappear, you. I'll know there's good news. Uh, thank you for this. This is really cool. Anything? What's your website? Uh, my website is sobo.ca. Is it still? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm not so good. I've been posting my own Instagrams and Facebook because, of course, Top Chef wants you to do that. And, oh, my goodness, sometimes my kids go, Mom, why don't you let us help you? And I go, because I'm going to learn. Uh, I think it's Sobo.ca. Okay, and hold that. Maybe it's Sobo to go now with the soups. I should look that up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> Thank you for, for guesting on the Clueless special. Thank you. Thank you.